on a snowy Saturday evening in Fitchburg. It is time for MASCAC quarterfinal action from the George R. Wallace Jr. Civic Center here on the campus of Fitchburg State University, where today the Falcons of Fitchburg State University look to advance in the MASCAC tournament, but standing in their way, the Vikings of Salem State. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to the Wallace Civic Center. As I said, I am John Googerty, joined, of course, by Dan Bolak. And Dan, Fitchburg State, it's been an up and down season for the Falcons, but they come in winners of four of their last five games. Yep, as we know, around the turn of the year, the Falcons ran into injuries and illness, struggled a little bit, wins were hard to come by, but over the last few weeks, they've really found their stride. They've won four of their last five games, and even the one loss deserves an asterisk because they were playing Worcester State their last time out on February the 18th, a week ago today. It was 3-3 entering the final minute and the Falcons needed to win in regulation to get the bye and the number two seed in the MASCAC tournament. If the game went to overtime, Worcester was guaranteed that number two seed. So the Falcons did something they wouldn't do normally. They pulled for the extra attacker. If it had worked out, uh, we wouldn't be calling the game here today. <laughs> Instead, Worcester potted two empty netters, one five to three, took the number two seed, and the Falcons will play in the quarterfinals looking for their first playoff victory in five years. Fitchburg State, the number three seed in the MASCAC. They come in with a record at 9-6-3 in the conference, 12-10-3 overall. You look at the other side of the equation and Salem State, their record not quite as good, obviously. They're 5-13 in conference, 7-18 overall coming into the season. So on paper, Fitchburg State very much the favorites, but Dan, these Vikings are no strangers to being the underdog. Indeed, for Salem State, this is the fourth time in the last five seasons that Salem State has ended up with the number six seed. However, each of the last three times that they got that number six seed, they won, they won, and they won. 2018, they beat Worcester in the quarters 3-2. 2019, beat UMass Dartmouth 4-3. In 2022, just last year, they beat Worcester again in the quarterfinals. In fact, in 2019 and 2022, they also won their semifinal games. What happened in 2018? They lost in the semifinals to this Fitchburg State team who would go on to win the MASCAC championship. That was indeed the last time these two teams met in the playoffs. You see the Falcons taking the ice, getting ready for warm-ups now. They'll be in the gold jerseys with green shorts, gold and white trim. Salem State in the orange and dark blue. I've said it a number of times before and I will say it again. It's a very good looking hockey game we got here for you today on FATV. But getting back to, as you were saying, Dan, the last time these teams met in the playoffs was the semifinals in 2018. Fitchburg State won that game five to two. They went on to become the 2018 MASCAC champions. We see the banner hanging here to the right at the Wallace Civic Center. They're looking to put up another one of those. They could probably fit a few more on that wall. They definitely could fit a couple more, but it all starts here in the quarterfinals. And the Falcons, they haven't won a playoff game since they won that MASCAC title. 2019, they lost at Worcester. 2020, they were the number two seed, but they lost to UMass Dartmouth. And then just last year, it's hard to relive, but that one nothing loss in overtime to Framingham State. Let's send it down to our public address announcer for the introduction of the starters and our national anthem. It's playoff hockey night in Fitchburg on FATV. And your Fitchburg State Falcons. The Vikings entered this, this evening's contest with an overall record of 7-18-0 and a 5-13-0 mark in the MASCAC. While the Falcons are 12-10-3 overall and 9-6-3 in conference play. Now let's meet today's starting lineups. First, the visiting Vikings. On defense, a senior from Lee, New Hampshire, number five, Luke Pepin. A senior from Wakefield, Mass, number 24, Matt Yanakopoulos. At forward, a junior from Lake Tahoe, California, number 13, Eric Larson. A freshman from Lake Tahoe, California, number 17, Zach Dill. A junior from Frisco, Texas, number 21, Keegan O'Donohue. In goal, a junior from Corner Brook, Newfoundland, number one, Aaron Mercer. The head coach for Salem State is William O'Neill, assisted by Jim Currier and Tom Walsh. And now the starting lineup for your Fitchburg State Falcons. 
On defense, a senior from St. Augustine, Florida, number 19, Joshua Miller. A senior from Quebec City, number 23, Antoine Gignac. At forward, a senior from Simsbury, Connecticut, number 11, Anthony Siolin. A senior from Messina, New York, number 16, Wyatt Wilmhurst. A senior from Westerville, Ohio, number 26, Hunter Fortin. And in goal, a freshman from North Kingstown, Rhode Island, number 29, Max Macchioni. The head coach for Fitchburg State in his 39th season is Dean Fuller. The associate head coach is Tom Patty. The assistant coaches are Vincent Giambrocco, Chris Kine, Mike Chartrand, and Brian McGrath. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to please stand for the playing of the national anthem. quarterfinal hockey action here on FATV. I'm John Gugarty joined by Dan Bullock. We are just about ready for the puck to drop between the Falcons of Fitchburg State University and the Vikings of Salem State. These teams met three times during the regular season. Fitchburg State was victorious on November the 10th by a score of seven to two and January 7th by a score of three to one. But the last time they met Dan back on Groundhog Day Salem State got the victory in overtime. Indeed they did. Falcons led late after trailing 1-0 going to the third period. They got two, including one just 10 seconds in. But the Vikings were able to score in the last couple of minutes to tie it. And then Keegan O'Donoghue potted the winner in overtime to give the Vikings the victory there. The only two points they were able to take from the Falcons this season. Max Macchione had 42 saves in the losing effort. He might have to do a lot of work in goal tonight. The freshman has been very strong this season for Fitchburg State. Goals against average, just a shade under two and a half. His counterpart, Aaron Mercer, allowing just over four goals per game. But at a certain point, Dan, they don't play the games on paper. They play them on ice. Here with the first period play-by-play -play is Dan Bolak. Underway we go here in the NASCAP quarterfinals. Falcons go left to right in the home gold. The Vikings right to left in the road oranges. Dumped in and Anthony Siolan will pursue that one, try to center it out, but nobody there in gold. Falcons will get it on the second touch though. Josh Miller dumping it in. He picked up by Pepin. Pass off comes back to Pepin. Siolan with a check there. Vikings trying to bring it up ice. They've got that dynamic top line out there to start with Larson, Dill, and O'Donohue. Falcons dumping it in, Siolin with a stick on that one, flicked up in the air, here's Larson up the left side, stop that at the blue line, now it's going to come back to him on the right side of the blue line, he picks up Nolan Sargent, will take a hold of that puck. Yeah, our first line changes the game, 45 seconds in. Moving up ice on the near side, Sargent going parallel to the blue line, keep that puck on side, dumps it in, Mercer behind his own net, settles it down, Michael Macchione there, playing a check, trying to Skaggs there. Macchione trying to find Skaggs, but they switch places, doesn't come to him. Out to the left point, shot, whistles wide to the left. Picked up by Skaggs for a moment. Macchione can't keep it in the zone. Now in the skates of Boothiette, he's dispossessed and thrown to the ice. 
taken for a moment by Chris Dowd, but he can't do a whole lot with it himself. 80 seconds gone in the first period, no scoring shots. As here's Macchione, moving it along as he takes a collision there from David Seacap. Flipped up into the neutral zone, settled at the red line by Landon Gretericks. He goes out near side for Skylar Miller, tries to stretch it up. Looking for Raph Krasner behind the net. Stick work for the puck into the right wing corner. Now to the right point, shot turned aside by Macchione. First shot of the game goes to the Vikings, first save to the Falcons. There's been no feeling out at the first few minutes of this game, Dan. It is pedal to the metal from the word go. Salem State has the advantage early on, but both teams playing their hearts out right from the jump. You can see the intensity flying through the air as Cole Archambault skates it up. Tries to drop it off for Cookson. Comes back to Archambault off a skate. He goes to the right point, Jack Johansson. His shot flicked wide to the right of the cage. Now hey, Hughes got a stick on that one. And Hughes will make the pass up on the near side. Luke Day gains the red line and backhands it into the zone. Nearly two and a half gone in the first period. And no score as the puck on the right side kept in by the Vikings. Hughes trying to flick it towards the goal. Nothing going there. Loose top of the slot. Yanakopoulos will move it into the right wing corner. Falcons able to take it away. And here's Cookson. Ethan DeMumbrum had a golden opportunity on that last possession for Salem State. Just couldn't get a stick on that dangerous centering pass. Vikings able to take it in the neutral zone. Dump it back in. They'll change the personnel. And on the far side, they get control of the puck. Now some sharp passes, but nobody willing to take the shot. Another opportunity for Salem State. They had a four on one there for a moment and couldn't capitalize. Just a lot of moving the puck along, but nobody really wanting to shoot it there, and nobody did get the opportunity to shoot it. Seolan getting it back into the zone. Willem Schurz throws it on, saved by Mercer, his first of the game. Now thrown in front, looking for Seolan on the doorstep on the right wing. Puck doesn't come to him. And he had it too, he was right in front of the net. Great job by the Viking defenseman get, not letting that puck get through. You can see Max Macchione coming out and sticking that one in the corner, not going to let any Viking get to that puck. That goes off a stick into the zone. Seola beat the puck into the zone, so he had to tag up and retreat. 16-15 to go, first period, no score. Vikings get a shot off, saved by Macchione. Scrambling for the rebound in the slot. Falcons able to clamp down and get it out of the zone. Dumped in, no icing coming there. Mercer will paddle it along. And now Salem will try to make their way up. That goes off the stick of Connor Woolley, and the Falcons will take it. On the far side, 75-footer whistles just wide. Bergman trying to play it off the hop. Vikings will take on the near side. And here's Woolley again. To the blue line, that's as far as he goes. Skaggs will have it for the Falcons now. On the far side. Puck touched the right side of the red line. So into the zone it goes. A little bit of miscommunication, a little bit of scrambling there. Vikings won't let that bite them. Dangerous pass by Mercer. He got away with it, though. Indeed. 15-15 to go, first period. No score shots, 2-1 in favor of the green and gold. Macchione's pass finds nobody. Luke Day was the only one in the vicinity, and he's wearing the wrong color shirt. Here is Michael Macchione, he gets it back. He gets a shot off. Mercer fights it off with the shoulder, not sure he saw it. Only one man in front of him, but he screened the ball the way. And a good touch by the Falcons on the Salem blue line to prevent an icing. Now skated up is Luke Pepin into the zone. Pepin trying to make moves. Not able to get around Jack Johansson and get a good shot away. Pepin, no goals this season for the alternate captain for the Vikings. Here's Oliver Cookson. He carries it up into the zone. Tries to go behind the net. Matt Yanakopoulos, the captain, with strong pressure. Out to the point. That shot is deflected away there by Pepin. Basically getting his shaft of his stick up in there. And now we'll have a whistle. With 14.20 to go in the first period, shots two apiece. And we are scoreless. You know, Dan, it's illegal in hockey to cross-check a man. But I just learned that it's perfectly fine to cross-check the puck because that's how Luke Pepin blocked that shot. He did, like, in the textbook definition of cross-checking, get your stick parallel to the ice, thrust your arms forward. He just did it to the puck, so it was totally fine. Yep, and as long as the shaft of the stick is below the shoulders, it's perfectly legal. That one goes off a stick or two, 
into the zone. Now intercepted in front. Borden with a chance. Puck, and the puck pinballs around in the paint, but can't get it quite on target. Will be one save for Mercer on all of that. Siolan with another intercept. Finds Miller on the right circle. Trying to find a shooting lane to shoot it around Larson, but had trouble getting good wood on it. Now here's Dill up the left side. It's tossed in the right wing corner after going off a Falcon stick. Now they'll have it at their own blue line and skate it up with some space. Here's Hunter Ford. Ford into the right circle, holding in the corner. Move it along to the far side. Falcons will dig it out. Can't get much with that, and Dill will take it. Now skating up is Chris Dowd. Into the zone he goes. Shot is blocked by the man out in front. Trenton Skaggs is going to have a bruise, but I'm sure his goaltender will thank him for it. Helping to shut down that chance is the freshman defenseman. Off the glass and then caught in the skates of a Viking. And that was David Seacack who couldn't find it. Now the Falcons skated up. Two minutes. Well, backhanded around the boards. Energy line out there for the Falcons. As here's Woolley into the zone for Salem. His shot deflects off the stick of a Falcon defenseman into the netting and out of play. 12.48 to go first period, no score. Dan, you and I have called games at a number of different levels this season. It's been hockey, it's been prep school. We've called some D3 college games, obviously. We've called Fitchburg State games. This has been the most intense and fast-paced seven minutes of hockey I can remember seeing all year. Both teams with the go pedal pushed straight to the floor from the get-go. We'll see how long these teams can keep the tempo up as a shot is blocked down in front. Couldn't get through the maze of bodies. Vikings trying to take control on the near side boards. Fitchburg will pull it out. Passing up Johansson. Not able to track that puck on the pass from Haldig. And now into the Viking zone. Having trouble with this Kyle Waldusky. Now centered out in front off the stick of Macchione. Couldn't get to the blade of Boothiette. And a shot is blocked from the left side boards. Puck behind the net. Waldusky trying to get it out of the zone, but kept it at the left point. Now the left boards held in the circle. No clean shots able to be made. And a big chance doesn't go anywhere. And now cleared out of the zone. You can hear the heavy hitting going in this contest. Gene Bouthiette sacrificed his body for that hit. He sacrificed his stick for that hit. Lumber's still down right under the Captain Kenneth W. Gates sign. Kramer able to keep it in his zone. Great pressure, and they score! Kaivo Kramer! Just barely keeping the puck in the zone. Kept the pressure on, and a few passes later, he pops the goal to give the Falcons the first strike of the contest. Toivo Kramer only had four goals in the regular season, but his fifth is the biggest. See there, it's a beautiful pass. He goes right through the five hole. Nothing Mercer could do. And it all started with that plate, just barely keeping it in the zone. Oliver Cookson. Archambault and Cookson will pick up the assists. That's going to be assist number six for Archambault and four for Cookson. Falcons regain the zone from Seolan. Backhands it towards goal, but not quite on target. Blasting as Miller gets all the way to Mercer. He makes the stop. Second chance is blocked. Now the Vikings with their top line out. O'Donohue trying to nutmeg one of the Falcon defensemen. Now Larson. Skating it to the right corner. Trying to put it in front for Seacack finds the stick of Seolan instead. He'll play it off the glass and out of the zone. 10.40 to go, first period. Falcons lead 1-0. Now Seacat gains it in instead. That's fought off, up in the air. Did that go in? They say it isn't, they say it's still alive. Hartson throats for a moment. I think somehow Macchione kept that out of the net. Let's have a look at this again. 
No he, goal. He did. What a save there. Macchione fought off the initial shot, punched it up in the air. It didn't fly as high as he would have expected. Ended up behind him, nearly trickled into the net. But Macchione, with that tremendous mobility, able to reach back and keep that out of the net. Hand pass called there with 10.18 to go in the first, and it will remain 1-0. I think RPA announcer may have introduced Macchione as a senior. He is just a freshman, but he has played this year with the poise of a senior. From our perspective here on the near side, elevated a little bit in the press box, we saw Macchione make the initial save and then desperately turn around and dive backward. And then I heard a whistle and saw the referee come in. And for a moment, I thought he was pointing as if to indicate goal, but he was just keeping an eye on the puck. He was just indicating that the play was dead. A tremendous recovery by Macchione. The freshman keeper from North Kingstown, Rhode Island, Keeps it one nothing in his side's favor. And now, Dan, after that near disaster, the hearts in throats moment, as you so eloquently put it, as a goaltender, you've got to take a breath. You've got to calm down. It's like it's almost like being a closer in baseball, right? One of the most important attributes you can have is a short memory. Macchione's got to put that near miss behind him and be like, okay, we still have the lead. Let's go. Indeed. Coming in today, Macchione's 19th start, 863 record, 241 goals against 928 save percentage. Leave second in the conference in goals against third in save percentage. But he has played very well, really continuing that legacy of that number 29. Icing called against the Falcons. And of course, with that goal by Kramer, it's also the first time the Falcons have scored a playoff goal here at the Civic Center since 2018. It had been a while. 2019, they scored a few goals against Worcester, but they lost that game in Worcester. 2020, they were in the semifinals against UMass Dartmouth, but they lost 4-0. 2021, there was a plague. In 2022, Fitchburg played Framingham because of a plague, the same one and lost one to nothing. So it's been a while since they've had a playoff goal here in this building. And they're gonna be looking for more today. We've still got a lot of hockey to be played. And you know this is gonna be a good one considering the intensity these two teams are playing at. Larson will backhand it up into the air and that's going to be snared by the Falcon keeper there. Think that Falcons hope that's the best save from Matt Ratter will make all night. But that was Matone. That was Matone. I flipped a coin in my head. <laughs> He's very excited for himself. Yep. He's on the far bench pump and is just like, yeah, I got one. Yeah. The fifth year goalkeeper from New Windsor, New York, Chris Matone. The only fifth year player on the team for the Falcons, actually. Hunter Forden out to the left side. And the shot goes behind the nets. Johansson tries to get to that puck. Wilshire should keep that going. Now Johansson battling there on the near side boards. Raph Frazner there with the pressure, able to get it out of the zone. Going to call the offside there. Horton was trying to tag up, but he was pretty clearly still over the blue line when that puck ran into his skate. He'll bring the face off to the center circle. With 8.23 to go in the first. Falcons one, Vikings nothing. Of course, two of the three most experienced coaches in Division Three hockey doing battle here today in Fitchburg. Dean Fuller, 38th season in charge of the Falcons. Bill O'Neill, the longest tenure coach in D3 hockey, 41st season. Actually, the longest tenure coach in all of the NCAA. The one in the middle, in case you're wondering, is Jack Arena of Amherst College. Started a year before Dean Fuller, actually went straight from graduating from Amherst right into the head coaching position. That's a good gig if you can get it 40 some odd years ago. Something tells me that his replacement will not be a freshly graduated senior. You don't see that very often or pretty much ever nowadays. Maybe a year or two as a coach getting, as an assistant getting used to things, but going straight from the active roster to the head coaching position, that's a rarity and then some. Vikings regaining the zone. Dill trying to backhand it along. 
Lots of gold skates in the way. So they're able to bring the puck back to the Salem blue line. Now Keegan O'Donoghue gains the Falcon blue. But look at all that pressure there. They are really clamping down on the Vikings as they gain the zone, having a lot of trouble really moving the puck along. We'll have a whistle here with 7.24 to go in the first. Faceoff will come just outside the offensive zone. Of course, this isn't the only quarterfinal game today. Starting in just a handful of minutes is the 4-5 matchup between Westfield State and UMass Dartmouth. There's an interesting story to be had about that matchup that we'll get to on the next stoppage, as long as I remember. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Seacack <laughs> sent to the ice. And the Falcons will take the puck from Matt, dump it out of the zone. Matt Yanakopoulos will pick it up at the red line. Now to the near side in front of the Viking bench. Seacack takes a hold of it. His shot goes off a Falcons gate, and Millette will clear the zone. D to D, back in the Vikings end. Nicopolis will move it along. And the Vikings able to distribute it back into the Falcon end. The Vikings will change up the legs. Back and forth in the neutral zone. Now to the near side bench, Corey Tuminis with the pick. Tuminis into the zone and now he's going to double back. He sees the line change happening behind and doesn't really like the numbers. <laughs> Wait a second, I'm wearing yellow, there's four guys wearing orange, I don't have any friends here. This is going to be bad for me, I better leave. Just also buy a few extra seconds to let the Falcons finish the line change. Interesting and sharp awareness there by the Levinster native. Just under six to go in the first period, Falcons won and the Vikings nothing on Toivo Kramer's fifth of the year. Battle for him deep in the Falcons end. Fitchburg able to win that one, but Pepin able to intercept the clearing pass with the glove, knocking it down to the ice. He keeps control of it on the right side, now in front. Shot through a lot of traffic, never got all the way to Macchione. Comes back to the point in Ethan Dumumrum. He'll move it along, see Olin will get a stick on that instead. Falcons can't clear. Pepin throws it behind the net. Off the boards it comes to Cronkite. Evan Cronkite moving it along to the near side, but the Falcons will take from there. Wilmshurst will dump the 90-footer on goal, and Mercer will paddle that down. Stretch pass, knocked at the red line, and into the zone, Miller for the Falcons. will take it along. Sharp hand-eye coordination, very necessary to play in this contest today. We've seen a lot of great examples. Mercer around the boards for Larson on the near side. He'll hold with the pressure from Cookson. Now pass it off on the near side. Here's Keegan O'Donoghue. Trying to toss it along for Dill. Dill's able to get to that in the left wing corner. Now Larson skating in in the right wing corner. Great shot there by O'Donoghue. One of the better chances Salem's had today, but Max Macchione is more than ready for it. Another good save by Macchione was tested pretty hard in the opening minutes of this period. It's kind of calmed down more, but he's still able to stand up to that shot. So you UMass Dartmouth and Westview. Yes. So they ended up, they were playing a game with similar stakes. UMass Dartmouth had the advantage. If that game went to overtime, they would get the four seed. And as it turned out, that game was also 3-3 in the final minute. And Westfield did what Pittsburgh did. They pulled for the extra attacker but they were successful. They got that last minute goal to make it 4-3. UMass Dartmouth pulled for the extra attacker but couldn't find an equalizer. And so Westfield was able to win that contest and they earned the right to host that quarterfinal game at Amelia Park. Sometimes it works. It does, I just find it interesting how we had two different matchups in a sense in which a seed was very much on the line between those two teams, the direct outcomes contributing to the seeding of this tournament. Salem played on that last day too, they had Plymouth, and the question there was would Plymouth run the table in the conference? They did. The Panthers finished 18-0 in conference play with 53 of a possible 54 points. 
and the one point they dropped, you saw it here. Pittsburgh State. And you saw it here on FATV. Vikings with a little bit of zone time. So it comes out there and a shot there by Eamon Miller is patted aside by Max Macchioni. Vikings keep control of it. Grunerex trying to move it along, keeping it. Now holding left circles, Miller. Onto the left side, thrown in front. That stopped by Macchioni, sort of in a stand-up position with the paddle. Unconventional, but it got the job done. Up still behind the net. Close angle deflects high in the air and behind the net. The Falcons now really under a lot of pressure. Really trying to support their keeper in uh, clogging up the slot. And trying to get that puck out of the zone. They do just that. It'll come down the ice. Will it go for icing? It will not. Waved off because it was attainable and also it never got to the goal line anyway. And a shot from the left circle by Payne Hughes is gloved by Macchioni. I was about to say that that was the perfect clearance for Finchburg. Just waffle it all the way down the ice, make sure its momentum stops just before the goal line so you don't get the icing. But then, not four seconds later, the puck's all the way down the other end, and Macchioni's got to make a save. Feels like Salem's found another gear in this period as they've really been controlling the puck and possession in the latter stages of this first. 2.40 to go in the first and a 1-0 lead for the Falcons. Millette holding against the boards. Brendan Walk being pressured against the boards as well by Pepin. Now Jack Saavedra backhanded along. Out to the red line. Larson will throw it towards goal. Macchioni will settle it. The right side boards, active stick, takes the puck for a moment, moves it along to the near side, and cleared out of the zone. Vikings looking to regain and re-enter. As David Seacat goes in the left wing corner. Christian Haldig battling with him. Falcons playing a bit of keep away. Forden taking the pressure from two Vikings. He continues to move the puck up. Forden shaking off a hit there. Seacat trying to drive him into the boards. Falcons regain the Viking end with 100 seconds to go in the first in the one nothing lead. Miller can't keep it in the zone. Now Connor Woolley gets to the blue line and no farther. Borden now on the far side. Gignac skating up here. Wants to take a shot. He's got eight goals this year. That one cut down in front. Wilshurst out to that left point. Gignac with a blast. Sticked away by Mercer. 70 seconds to go in the frame. Vikings will get fresh legs on the ice on the dump-in. Macchioni will wait. Gignac. He'll settle behind the net, and he'll hold it. And we'll move it along. I fortunately don't have to say holds it 13 times. <laughs> that happened once. No penalties in this frame. We're in the final minute of it. The Falcons leading 1-0. Strong backhander there by Kramer. Goes wide. Skaggs out to Sargent. Shot through some traffic. And a glove save by Mercer. Maybe the most important save Mercer's made tonight. Oliver Cookson was crashing down to his left. If there was any kind of rebound, there was nobody between Cookson and the back of the net. Mercer was able to hold on to it with that left-handed glove. The draw will come to his right. 38.9 to go in the first. Shots unofficially 9-8 in favor of the green and gold. Each team have had their uh, streaks where they've controlled the play. The Falcons have the lone strike in this period. Vikings have their top line back out on the ice. The shot is turned aside by Macchioni. And now they continue to control from Dill, the left wing corner, trying to turn Sargent inside out. And a great shot there from that left side by Skylar Miller. But couldn't get it quite all the way to the Falcon keeper. Now a blast right side, they score! With six point three seconds left in the period, Eric Larson has tied it. Well, 
That was the concerning thing for the Falcons with all that pressure. Could the Vikings steal a last second goal in this period? And indeed they have. Just a sharp cross ice pass. And Larson makes no mistake on the one timer. Blasting it past Macchione would be tough for any goalie to stop. Buzzer wasn't interested in sounding. <laughs> Clock was like, wait a second, do we have to stop? Do we really? Okay. Great job by Salem State in those last few minutes, Dan. You see there, Dean Fuller, not terribly happy to be going to the locker rooms even at one. Probably not happy with something Salem State's doing either. You see him talking with the referee there. We were clean in that period in terms of discipline. No penalties either side. But Larson's goal in the dying seconds ends up being the equalizer, bringing us into the intermission level at one. Situational statistics for 20 minutes of play. This is the 10th time the Falcons are level after 20. They're six and three. The Vikings, the 11th time this year that they're level after 20. That's the most common outcome based on the possibility of leading, trailing, tied. They're three and seven in these situations. We talked at the top of the broadcast about how Salem State comes in with you know, the inferior record. There's no way around it. They were seven and 18 this year. Fitchburg State was 12, 10 and three. Fitchburg State took two of the three meetings between these two teams and one of them was an absolute blowout. But this team is tough, Dan. They came to play. They're used to being the underdog. And through one period of play, if you, if you told me coming in that one team had a, a record just above 500 and the other was well below, I wouldn't be able to tell. These teams look of equal skill. They are both playing very well, very good period in the first. 1-1 one, one is a good and fair score, I think. It feels about right in the grand scheme of things. There were moments where it felt like the Falcons were struggling to keep up with the Vikings' pace and that was most prevalent really in that final amount of time. I would say the first two minutes and the last two minutes. Yeah, especially, and there was a stretch sort of in that back half of the first period as well, but especially in that last two minutes of the first period, in that stretch where Salem was dictating the pace and the Falcons were really just trying to play a defensive game in that period, trying to equalize and limit the chances that Salem was getting. But on that last one, that was a lot to ask for on a laser beam by Larson for his team leading 16th goal of the season. You can't just sit back, you've got to go get more. Fitchburg State took the one nothing lead. We knew that wasn't going to be enough, and it is clear one goal is not going to do it. We will see at least one more, hopefully a few more, but we will see. We'll take the first intermission break with the teams. Come on back for period number two in just about 13 minutes' time. It's Hockey Night in Fitchburg, the MassCAC quarterfinals here on FATV. Back here at the Wallace Civic Center, getting ready for the second period of today's MassCAC quarterfinal matchup between the Falcons of Fitchburg State and the Vikings of Salem State. I'm John Gugerty, joined, of course, by Dan Bolak. Dan, it was a very eventful first period. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. No question about it. You see the opening goal there from Toivo Kramer after a great play to keep it in the zone. Some sharp passing later. That made it one nothing. And then there's a great save there by Macchione diving back there after punching it in the air. It was that close to going past, but Macchione able to keep it out. You can see a good shoulder save there on a play deep inside. Falcons had a couple chances as the period went on. Mercer able to knock that one aside. And as the play continued on, he was asked to make another save, just getting his glove out there and snaring it down. And then with 6.3 seconds to go in the period, Eric Larson on a one-timer with a feed from Skylar Miller and another assist for Zach Dill. That tied the score at 1-1. And that's where we stand through 20 minutes of play. Shots in the first period, 11-10 in favor of Salem State. There were stretches of play where Fitchburg dominated. There were stretches of play where Salem dominated. 
and 1-1 is a pretty appropriate score for the type of hockey we saw in the first 20 minutes. Was a very exciting back and forth first period of hockey here at the Wallace Civic Center. Teams are just about ready to get started with the second period of action. Before we get underway, Dan, we just had a lovely visit in the press box by Mr. Thomas, the manager of the arena. We want to send a special shout out to Michelle, who was very complimentary of the broadcast, all the work we do here at FATV. We're proud of it. We think we do an all right job, and it's good to hear that folks in the community see that as well. And it was just, that was very lovely to hear. So thank you very much for that. And incidentally, for the folks, see, I'm going to tie this into a plug because we're professionals here. For the folks at home who may know people in the Salem area or just around who aren't in Fitchburg but would still like to join us here on FATV, FATV programming is available on your streaming devices. You can find us in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store for the FATV app. We're also available on your Fire TV, Roku, and Apple TV devices. There's good old-fashioned FATV.org. You look for the education stream. Or, of course, in Fitchburg, over the air, Comcast Channel 9, Verizon Channel 36. So many different ways you can join us here, and we're happy to have you along today. Teams have switched sides as we get ready for period number two. Fitchburg State will be going right to left across your television screens. Salem State in the orange on the left side. We are underway. Draw comes to the near side boards, grabbed by Gignac. He'll send it over the blue line down into the Salem State end. Pursued there by Luke Pepin. He sends it all the way around the far side boards. And we get an icing all of 14 seconds into period number two. We saw the first period open up with a tremendous amount of intensity between these two sides. It's going to be an interesting question to see if these two teams can keep that intensity up for a full 60 minutes. That's, I think, a lot to ask for. Draw will come to the right side of Aaron Mercer. Goes back behind the Salem net. Pepin sends it forward. Zach Dill gains the red line. Blue line, rather, excuse me. Tried to leave it back for Larson, but we get a whistle. Offside against Salem. Just as a thought, too, it's the second time this week that Pittsburgh and Salem have played each other in playoffs here in the MassCast. The, the men's basketball teams played each other on Tuesday night down in Salem, and that game went to the final second. Tejon Joyner hit a buzzer beater to give the Falcons a 63-61 win. So Salem perhaps also looking for a little bit of revenge in the name of their men's basketball team. After all, the Falcons pulled off the upset as the five over the four. Salem would like to pull off the upset as the six over the three. A more intentional offside will bring the face off all the way back to one side of Ursa. All won by Bouffiet. Bergman sends it back behind the Salem net. Bouffiet gives chase alongside Macchione. Salem winds up with it. Played back behind the net again, sent along the far side boards. Larson will clear, sends it all the way down, no icing. Comes to Mike, Max Macchione. He leaves it off for his teammate, Gene Bouthiet. Bouthiet doesn't give to Fortin. Instead, he'll play it along the far side to Josh Miller. Miller now cross eyes for Fortin. And that goes all the way behind the net for icing. Trying to hit that stretch pass there, just a little too much oof in the end goes right to the goal line, and Skylar Miller was closer to the puck than Fordon. Thus Are we going to hear, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, Dan. Are we going to hear all of Eye of the Tiger? At this pace, and actually, upon further review, they actually, uh, the officials were dissatisfied with their call of icing. They didn't really like it in the end. Probably felt maybe the pass came from beyond the red line. Shouldn't have actually been icing. It was on the right side. They're going to bring the face off to center ice, as they will when they blow for icing, and it wasn't icing. Wyatt Wilmshire sends it in. Fortin gives chase, but it'll get back to the goaltender, Mercer. Tried to clear, can't do it. Wilmshire sends it in on Mercer. He just collapses the midsection, hangs on to the puck, and we get a faceoff with 18.37 to go here in the second period. Score still 1-1, shots on goal unofficially 11-11. A lot of ones on that scoreboard right now. But six of a kind, what do you get for that? thrown out of the casino. Shot from the point and a good glove saved there by Mercer. 
Uh, they switched it up. Now we're born in the USA. See Olin will face off against Chris Dowd. They fight to essentially a draw. Salem State winds up with it. Seacack tried to clear. Puck winds up steered in on Mercer. He pads it along the near side boards. Fortin still with it. Feels like Hunter Fortin's been on the ice for the entire two minutes of this second period. Puck comes out to Sargent. Can't handle it at the red line. Chance now for Salem State. Just plowed into was David Seacack. He ran into a brick wall named Trenton Skaggs. One of the more formidable brick walls you'll see. Now Wilmshurst with an opportunity. He tries the shot, couldn't get it on net. Good defense there by a couple of different Vikings. Cookson, his shot is blocked, gets a second chance. Shot through three defenders, never got in on Mercer. Johansson from the point, scores! Jack Johansson! just reared back and delivered a laser beam into the back of the net. His first goal of the season gives the Falcons the lead. One of only four players who was able to play in all 25 games for the Falcons this year. Jack Johansson, an unlikely hero, blasting it from the right point for his first career goal. In his 33rd career game, just a laser beam through so much traffic, it finds the back of the net. So much traffic, so much velocity, and into the back of the net, Jack Johansson's first career goal restores the Falcons to a one-goal lead. 2-1 they have it with 17.20 to play here in the second. Cole Archambault sends it in back behind the Salem net. Will be grabbed there by Waldusky. He sends it back the other way. Rhetoric's trying to clear. Waldusky will do it. Forward to Day. Day dumps it into the Fitchburg end. A couple of different Falcons there. Gignac grabs the puck. Miller grabs the bruising hit. Cleared out to Miller. He sends it right back in. Macchione will leave it for Gignac. Falcons change a couple personnel, take a deep breath, and now here they come. Miller forward for Archambault. He dumps it in. Official indicates no icing. Chased by Walk. Back out to the faceoff circle. Doesn't like it. Choosing instead to send it behind the net was Tuminous. Walk gets hit. Cleared out by Salem State. They poke it along the near side boards into the right wing corner. Chased down there by Peyton Hughes. Comes back out to the point for O'Donoghue, but he can't keep it in. Two minutes, cross ice pass for Walk. Chance for the Falcons now. Walk centering pass, shot, good save made there by Mercer. A little bit of a scramble on the rebound, but Salem State manages to clear it all the way down. No icing, Macchione plays it out. Grabbed by the Vikings. Try the wraparound, nothing there. Centering pass is intercepted by Michael Macchione, saving Max. Comes back into the Falcon end, but Sargent is able to clear. Back to Macchione at the red line. Reese Bergman took a dive, wanted a penalty, didn't get it. Puck comes to him at the blue line. Bergman's actually looking a little ginger right now. Still on the ice, though. Macchione in the left wing corner with Boothy at. Falcons can't control it. Chance for Salem State going the other way. Zach Dill sends it all the way down. Sargent will grab. Vikings choose to change. 15 minutes, 15 seconds left to play here in period number two. Bouthiette gains the blue line, but he does so just a little bit illegally. Michael Macchione had it cleared. We'll get a face-off. With 15-15 on the clock, the Falcons have 15 shots, which also corresponds to the fact that they have the first five shots in this period. Tiny Child wants a victory for his birthday. Falcons will see what they can do. They're usually an obliging sort. Somebody's going to win this game, I can tell you that. That's true. He does have a Falcon on his sign, though, so. I don't think he's indicating that he wants someone to win. He, he's chills and signs. Yes. A couple of referees, referee lines have been talking with Dean Fuller, the head coach of the Falcons, explaining something. We saw Dean Fuller was not too happy with the officials at the end of the first period either. 
may be feeling that the, uh, the Zebras are letting them play a bit too much. I mean, it is a playoff game, and we do hear in the playoffs that they do loosen up the rule books a little bit. But I think, you know, that collision with Bergman well away from the puck. They may have felt that was worth more than just a play on, that perhaps there probably should have been something called there. Falcons gained the blue line from the point, sent it in for Fortin, intercepted and clear. Skaggs will give chase for Fitchburg, no icing indicated. Instead, Skaggs will have to play it out. Gets it forward for Seolan. Seolan almost at the red line, dumps it all the way down. Wilmshurst gives chase, terrible angle shot. It was basically parallel to the goal line, but he got it in on Mercer. Mercer made the save. We'll get a face off in the Viking end. As long as you're throwing it on net, it gets to the goalie. You don't know how it's going to come off of the goalie's pads. You don't know how sharp they're going to be. It's always worth getting a puck to the net just to see what will happen. If it makes it to the goalie, who knows? You might get a shot like Johansson's that yep. finds the back of the net. Absolutely. Speaking of Johansson, this shot from the left point, no good. Goes wide of the net. Comes to Toivo Kramer behind the net. Falcons have both of their goal scorers on the ice right now. Kramer left it back for Archambault, but it was a little too long for him. Larson will take it up. Gets it over to O'Donoghue, back to Larson. Loses the handle, shot is deflected. Doesn't get in on Macchione. Back behind the net, Archambault manages to clear. Kramer will chase. Now a chance for the Falcons on the offensive end. Kramer, his shot. Trickled in on Mercer. He grabbed it on the rebound, and now Mercer just kind of skate pivots himself away. <laughs> I've never really seen that where he just, you just, you anchor yourself to the ice with the glove and then use the skate to circle away from the guy as he's coming in on you. That was very nice. Yeah, that was interesting there. <laughs> he detected that, oh, something bad is happening in my paint. I don't like it. I'm getting away. He turned himself into a human compass. <laughs> Face-off comes to the right side of the architectural tool. Cleared out all the way down by Salem State, and we get an icing. Puck will come right back down the other end. Yes, the architectural tool, not the navigational tool. That no. would have been very interesting. That would have been impressive. <laughs> if a goaltender could turn himself into a magnet that points at the North Pole, I mean, it might be better things for him to do than be a goaltender. <laughs> Draw comes to the left side of Mercer this time. Battled for along the far side boards. Now a chance for Miller. His shot goes wide of the net. Comes all the way back out to the Fitchburg blue line. Falcons will reset. Gignac cross ice for Miller. Miller bounces it off the boards. I think he wanted to hit Bergman, but Bergman once again was on his backside on the ice. Macchione in the left wing corner for Bergman. Bergman is dispossessed. Chance now for the Vikings going the other way. Puck bounces around a few times. Zach Day gives chase. He's got it in the left wing corner. He's hammered and kicked there by Miller in a legal professional sporting way, of course. It's hockey. Things happen. Cleared by the Falcons coming all the way down. And Mercer will let that one wisely go just outside of his crease, meaning that it's an offensive zone faceoff for the Vikings. 13-0-4 to play here in period number two. You remember, Dan, when we said that there were a whole bunch of ones on the scoreboard? Well, in the intervening time, Fitchburg State has all six of the shots on goals, shots on goal, rather, and one of them found the back of the net. Shots don't always tell the whole story, but I think it is fair to say that the Falcons have really controlled the last few minutes of play. They have. They've had a better run of play, better control of the puck. And now you can hear Salem appealing for a penalty and none is given. I mean, considering the standard of the game, it's about right. Eric Larson certainly felt that he was tripped. That might have had something to do with Blue. That might have had something to do with the fact that he was very clearly tripped, but nonetheless. Battle four along the far side boards, ultimately controlled by Jeremy Millett. Millett will send it forward for Walk. Now back to Millett, poked free from him by Pepin. 
Vikings have it. Eric Larson gains the blue line, advances it forward to O'Donohue. O'Donohue's shot saved made by Macchione with the left pad. Skaggs and Millette run into each other behind the Falcon net. Millette will clear it forward for Brendan Walk. Walk in two minutes now. Walk's shot is deflected. Well, Dusky got a skate on that one. Walk in the left corner. Now played along the near side boards. Vikings coming up the other way. This is Dill. Zach Dill gains the blue line, drops it back forward. Centering pass for Dill, loose in front of the net. Nobody knew where the puck was for a moment. And then as soon as Macchione figured it out, Danny, you could almost see, even though we're 50 feet away from him and he's wearing a mask, I could see his eyes go wide and the thought, oh, S-word, enter his head as he dove forward. Yeah, the uh, moments where instincts need to take over in those moments as a goalkeeper. You see that pass centered, and you see where that puck is going to go, and you know if you're not the first to it, it could be big trouble. Seolman played it all the way down the near side for Saavedra. Comes back to Saavedra from behind the Viking net. Connor Woolley now has it for Salem. He leaves it back for Waldusky. Waldusky gets hammered into the boards, but he does pass it along to the Seacat. Seacat centering pass is intercepted. Big collision in the left corner. Officials keep their hands down. They are letting them play. And they're playing hard. Flipped into the zone by Eamon Miller. Both teams fighting for it behind the Falcon net. Johansson comes out with it. He plays it off the boards and out of the zone. Good job by Seolan to dispossess a, a skater. He's one-on-one -on -one with Mercer. Great save there. Nightmare times for the Viking keeper, but he manages to deny Seolan. He got most of that puck and it, slid, it just slid right past that far post there. It's that close to trickling in and making a 3-1. If yet shot is deflected, Mercer is able to stick it aside. Vikings coming back the other way. Aggressively barreling in, shot ultimately goes wide of the net. Macchione's very presence was able to trick the Vikings into not getting a good shot off. Comes across for Gretorix, he's dispossessed. And that's flipped up and out of the zone by Bergman. All the way down to the far corner, no icing. Away from the play, Raph Krasno winds up on his backside. Bergman delivers a big hit. We've seen him get frustrated a few times this period. He gets a little bit of revenge on Pepin. Salem crowd has called out for a penalty a few times in this period. They have been denied. Chased into the right wing corner by Yannikopoulos. He'll take it all the way behind his own net. Nine and a half minutes to play here in period number two. Chance for the Vikings. Miller levels a big hit. Centering pass winds up behind the net. Tried to wrap around. Nobody there. Comes out to the point. One Viking takes it away from another. Yannikopoulos took it off the stick of O'Donoghue. Now Yannikopoulos to O'Donoghue. But that shot is deflected. It never gets in on Macchione. Yannikopoulos, another deflection by O'Donoghue. Centering pass goes nowhere. Salem State now with plenty of chances. Back to Pepin at the point. He can't get it off. Bergman is able to clear. Cookson will give chase. Fitchburg State needs to take a breath. Taken by Pepin along the near side boards. Great cross ice pass finds O'Donoghue. But Fitchburg State's defense crashes down on him. He doesn't even get the shot off. Falcons manage to clear, but it's right back in. Seacack and O'Donoghue can't keep it in. Fitchburg State again clears. And they'll take it all the way back behind their net. Eight and a half minutes to go here, period number two. Falcons lead the Vikings two to one in this 2023 NASCAC quarterfinal matchup. Toivo Kramer, cross ice pass for Brendan Walk, and he's offside. Looked like a great chance for the Falcons, but perhaps part of the reason it did was that Walk was not playing within the confines of the rules, Dan. Apparently so, and oh boy, what a great stretch for the Vikings there. So much pressure with their top line, their most dangerous players on the ice. Max Bacchioni having to go every which way. You can see the player that was offside wasn't walked, but it was the forward on the left wing who was just over the line, just didn't get it coordinated well enough. That one touches the ceiling and goes out of play. Skaggs was trying to clear it out of his zone. He found the ceiling instead. 
So we'll get a face-off in the offensive end for the Vikings. It will be to the right of Max Macchione. I know if you've watched Max Macchione playing in goal this year, there are some of those goalies out there that are very positionally sound, very robotic in their nature as they track the puck. Max Macchione is not that. He's very athletic, very dynamic in how he moves around his crease. He's willing to play a little more unconventionally. It's a breath of fresh air, I think. It gives you, you know, memories of a goalies like Tim Thomas or Dominic Koscik or maybe a Marc-Andre Fleury, if you will. Goalies that rely on their athleticism to put themselves in the right place at the right time. And he's been a lot of fun to watch. And again, he is just a freshman in goal for the Green and Gold. Falcons looking forward to watching him for many years to come. They hope to have many games to come in this 2023 playoff campaign. Vikings gain the Jones. Shot save made. Nothing super fancy or athletic about that one. That was just stick up the gloves, snatch the puck out of the air. Macchione was equal to the task. Denies Luke Pepin's shot. A great look at that. You're just watching. And then when the release comes, from the alternate captain of the Vikings. Macchione just snaps the glove up in the air, yoinks it out, and holds for the draw. 15 saves for the freshman. Another faceoff will come to his right. Won by the Falcons, they're able to clear. This is Corey Tuminus. cross eyes pass is intercepted, it winds up on the stick of Jeremy Millette, but he can't get the handle. Wound up trickling in on Mercer, and now some pleasantries are being exchanged. A little pushing and shoving and dinner reservations being made in front of the Viking net. I got to tell you, Dan, if nobody goes to the penalty box after this one, they might as well not have whistles. Do you think I see some pointing this time around? Corey Tuminus is not even going to the penalty box. He's being sent to the locker room. The last time we saw these two teams play here in Fitchburg, we saw the officials hand out not one, not two, but three misconducts to Salem State players. And now our referee crew is going to come together and discuss how they want to adjudicate this. We do get our first penalty of the game with 7.30 to go in the second. Our referees, Jay Durfee and Matthew Fuller, linesman Patrick Sharon and Richard Muller, all from Atlantic Hockey. Honestly, Dan, this was building for most of this second period. Like these teams have been playing hard from the jump, but both teams have felt, in my opinion, justly aggrieved that there were no penalties called. Both sides, both fans, both teams' fans have thought there should have been penalties. You could see the players getting more frustrated. Ultimately, someone decided to take it into their own hands, and Tuminus got sent to the locker room for it. Yep. So he gets at least a 10 minute misconduct since there's 7.30 to go in the period. We're not gonna see him the rest of the period anyway. But the question's gonna be, is it just 10 or do they wanna give a game to him for that? And of course, there's just a lot of frustration which generally will happen with you know things that happen with the puck battling for it in the crease. They put five on the board against Tuminus. However, I also noticed the officials were pointing to the left side of Mercer is where they wanna have the face off. So there's got to be something more to it than just that, because they are not going to have a defensive zone faceoff for a team going on the power play. Well, all of this started after Mercer covered up a loose puck. But I'm, even so, like you said, if it's just Fitchburg State going on the penalty kill, having an offensive zone power faceoff for them, no, that is not the case. We're also going to have Raf Praisner go to the box. He'll serve two minutes for the Vikings. So he's going to get a roughing call or something to that effect. But Tuminus is called for what I probably hands to the face, contact with the head. And he gets a five in a game, so we won't be seeing him the rest of the way. I believe it is Jack Saavedra serving the penalty for the Falcons. He'll sit for five minutes. Praisner will sit for two. So for right now, we are four on four. Just under seven and a half minutes to play in this second period. Falcons lead 2-1. It'll be four on four for two minutes, and then Salem State will have the man advantage. Fortin gains the blue line, looks to shoot, doesn't like it, gets around a man, 
And we get another penalty as Fortin tripped up right as he was coming in on Mercer. So after no penalties at all for the first period and a half, now we get a roughing call, a game misconduct, and another penalty. Luke Pepin will go to the box, all within 30 seconds of ice time. You can see that's a penalty Pepin had to take there as Ford had a great line going right to the front of the net. And that's a dangerous position for the puck to be at. Falcons will have a slightly abbreviated four on three power play. So it'll be four on three for the next 91 seconds or less. Seolan wins the draw for the Falcons, comes out to Josh Miller. He'll go to Seolan. Seolan got it back across to Gignac, but Gignac couldn't keep it out in the zone. Salem State pokes it out. Miller will reset, gets it forward to Fortin. Fortin drops it back for Miller. Miller will set the offense again. He goes to Gignac at the point. Can't get the shot on target. Comes all the way back around the boards to Miller. Does Miller want to take it himself? He might have, but he was dispossessed. It's cleared out by Zach Dill. So all the penalties, it was two minutes, five in a game for grabbing the face mask. Fraser goes for roughing, and as we saw, Pepin going for tripping. Seolan sends it back for Gignac. Gignac is dispossessed by Skyler Miller, who loses his stick in the process. Miller gets his stick back. Hunter Fortin gets the puck. Fortin back to Gignac. Gignac to Miller. 27 seconds on the four on three. Comes to Fortin at the goal line. He sends it for Seolan. Seolan's shot is deflected, but it winds up on the stick of Gignac. Gignac hits the ice. Officials say play on. Gignac is bullied there by Zach Dill. Salem State will clear. 10 seconds on the four on three, just sent in by Dill. He'll go to the bench for a fresh set of legs. Fitchburg State will let the four on three expire. Now we're back to four on four for about 22 seconds. The entire Salem State bench was uh, not happy with the play along the near side boards. They were appealing for too many men against Fitchburg. And they may have gotten it. And they did get it. Lack of discipline for the Falcons negates the last 18 seconds of that four on four. Salem State's going to start the power play early. Eighteen seconds of four on three, then it'll be an extended five on three, which will turn into a five on four. It's, uh, yeah, dangerous times for the Falcons right now. Dangerous times for the referees as well. Mr. Durfee just took a fall. He's okay. He's tough. He's a hockey referee. As we mentioned, you know, the penalty to the Viking ran out, and I wonder if maybe one of the Falcons got crossed up on the line change just for the fact that, you know, a penalty had expired, but that penalty was to the opposition, not to them. So they don't get a fifth guy out on the ice. The Vikings noticed it, and then the officials noticed it as well. Yannikopoulos sends to O'Donoghue. O'Donoghue tried to shoot, was steered back behind the net, comes back out to Larson. Larson to Yannikopoulos, back to Larson, cross ice for O'Donoghue, poked away. Now we're up to five on three. Two-man advantage for Salem State. Fitchburg State leads, but they have 90 seconds of torture coming for them. Cross-ice pass for Eric Larson. Vikings taking their time. O'Donoghue, far side boards. Great job there by Fitchburg State. Trenton Skaggs just poked that puck away, killing precious seconds off this two-man advantage. 110 left on the five on three. 156 on the major determinus. Falcons managed to clear it all the way down the ice and they'll get three fresh sets of legs on the ice. Gignac, Bergman, and Miller tasked with the kill. Two man advantage for the Vikings. 50 seconds left on it. Comes to the goal line. Now back out for Larson. Cross ice for Yannikopoulos, back to Larson. 
Severn pass is deflected by Macchione. Sends children diving out of the way. They're tough, they're hockey fans. It's okay. Kid winds up with a probably temporary souvenir. I can't even believe that we got that set of penalties that have fallen the way they have that the penalty clock on the screen, which I programmed, can only tell you how much left in the overall penalties to Fitchburg because the first penalty is the major, not the one that's most recent up. And they just score to tie the game. David Seacack went top shelf right side, and he levels this game at two. Comes just like that. When you're down on the five on three, it is so hard. Salem State takes advantage, and they have leveled this game at two. Zekak able to bring it back in the zone and get a quick, solid snipe on Macchione. He's not able to track it quickly enough. And for David Seacack, he will pick up his sixth goal of the season. And we're level again. That brings one Falcon back on the ice, but it's still a power play for Salem for almost another minute left. Tuminus' major looms large over this one. Pittsburgh State is still serving. Skated around, tried the wraparound opportunity, does Pepin. Macchione's able to deny it. Pepin goes cross ice for Gretorix. Back across to Dowd. Now to Pepin, he'll shoot from mid center ice, basically, and it's saved by Macchione. Might have taken a deflection as well. Luke Day was in there for the Vikings. They'll get a fresh set of skaters for the last 28 seconds of this man advantage. Face off comes to Macchione's left. Set back for Dill. Comes back out to Yannikopoulos. He loses the handle. It's loose in front of the net. Falcons players are tripping each other. Viking goes down to the ice. Salem State manages to clear the zone, but that's a problem because it was their offensive zone. Just five seconds left on the power play now. One last chance for Salem State. O'Donoghue's shot goes wide, and we're back to even strength. Saavedra heads out of the box and straight to the bench. Anthony C. Olin's on the ice. We're back to five on five. 2.20 to play here in the second period. Bad angle shot save made by Macchione. Stopped the clock with 2.17. And Dan, we're back to level in more ways than one. 2-2 two -two in goals, 19-19 in terms of shots. Just a bit of a streak of indiscipline at a bad time. The Vikings able to make the Falcons pay on the five on three. So we're level again in pursuit of another goal. Anthony and Christopher Dowd set to take the face off, which will come to the right of Max Macchione. Freshman goaltenders made 17 saves tonight for Fitchburg State. They'll have to make a fair few more if he wants to send the Falcons to the semifinals. Seolan along the far side boards. Gets it forward, bad angle shot, save made. Wilmshurst got that one off. Can't keep it in at the blue line, Ken Miller. Fitchburg State has to reset. Vikings have it behind their own net. And they will clear it out. Eamon Miller gains his own blue line, is dispossessed by Seolan. Seolan's going one on three. Finally gets some support, but the Vikings are able to clear. Minute and a half to play here in the second. Shot from just beyond the blue line is steered away by Mercer. Salem State will reset. Pass was tipped at the red line, so no icing, even though it goes all the way down uncontested. Josh Miller comes across to Toivo Kramer. He had the first goal for Fitchburg. Cole Archambault with it. He's dispossessed, delivers a hit, gets the puck back. Tries to send it along for Halbig, but Halbig was moving backwards. Now seacax has got it. He gains the blue line. His shot is caught out of midair by Macchione with 101 to play. Hockey's fun. It is. 
struggling to come up with words to analyze how this second half of this period is gone. This game rules. I know we're, we're in Fitchburg and supposed to be rooting for the Falcons and oh no, they lost to the lead or whatever. This game rules. Now Mike Macchione with a breakaway opportunity. He goes to the ice, tries the shot from his backside. He goes into the net, but not the puck. That counts for nothing. Falcons can't keep it in. Chance for the Vikings going the other way. 45 seconds, but Skater is dispossessed. Macchione sends it along the far side boards. Yannikopoulos can't handle it. It'll be chased down by Skyler Miller. Tries to clear, can't do it. Bergman cross ice pass, shot goes wide. Johansson was looking for his second, but he couldn't find it. Bouthiette can't keep it in. 25 seconds in the period as they battle along the near side boards. Bouthiette sends it back. Falcons want one more opportunity. Johansson's cross ice pass finds no one. Chance for the Vikings now. Zach Dill gains the blue line, sends it back behind the net. 10 seconds left in the period as Johansson grabs the puck. If anyone's going to score, it's going to be Fitchburg. Along the far side for Seolan, his shot is deflected. Trickles in and covered by Mercer with two and a half seconds left in period number two. I will reiterate, because it is important, hockey is fun. This game rules. The passion between these two sides. Winner looking for a date in the semifinals with Worcester State in a handful of days time. Draw will come to Mercer's left. And as you said, if anybody's gonna score in this period, it's gonna be Pittsburgh. Battled for right off the face off. Clock runs out before the Falcons can get a shot. We go to the locker rooms tied. After one, it was 1-1. One, one. After two, it is 2-2. Two to two. Indeed it was. And really, Dan, the second period was very similar to the first, I feel. Salem State came out of the gate very strong. Fitchburg State had to weather the storm a little bit. As we got a little bit deeper into the period, Fitchburg got a goal, started looking like the better side. But then at the end of the period, in the first, it was just, you know, it just was the flow of play and Salem State nicked a goal. In the second, it finally came to penalties and Fitchburg State got the lesser of it. Indeed. And with Salem, you know, they got that goal from David Seacalf on the five on three to equalize after Jack Johansson gets his first career goal at the college level on a laser beam from the right point less than three minutes into the second period. Fortunately, I own a black Subaru, so this, <laughs> this does not apply to me. I own a red Hyundai Accent, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, you know, Fitchburg had the run of play for a lot of that period. It took about eight minutes for Salem State to get a shot on Max Macchione. But really, the turning point was when the first penalties were finally assessed. Corey Tuminis sent from the game for clutching the face mask of a Viking. And although a Viking went off for a minor penalty, it still led to that man advance that contributed to the five on three that led to the tying goal. Salem probably had you know, that chance for the upper hand because the penalties went in their favor in the end. But and then there, of course, there was the too many men on the ice penalty against Fitchburg State. Can't forget that one. Yep, and that's just on the Falcons themselves. They've got to make sure you get, have all your I's dotted, your T's crossed. And they got caught out there with uh, a, a T with no bar. <laughs> They're called for too many men. And so that led to the extended run of adversity. And... Salem punished the you know, The Falcons a week ago against Worcester State only went on the kill twice, both times. That kill ended with Worcester potting a puck in the back of the net. The penalty killing has been a little weak lately. And we don't know how many more penalties we're going to see, but I can tell you this, we're going to see at least another goal by the time this game is over. We have at least one more goal to show you. It is Hockey Night in Fitchburg here on FATV. Dan and I will take the remainder of the second period break with the players. Come on back for period number three. It is Falcons Vikings tied at two in the MASCAC quarterfinals. Do not go anywhere.
Hockey Night in Fitchburg here on FATV. I'm John Gugarty, joined as always by Dan Bolak. And Dan, before we jump into our analysis of the second period, we want to send thanks to our tremendous FATV crew. All right, let's see how well I can read your handwriting. <laughs> Nick Glenny is our director today. Travis Falk doing all the technical and audio stuff. Bill O'Brien's on replay. Tyler Sargent, Seth Rigby, Robin Como, and Evan Schockenbach are our camera operators today. We thank each and every one of them for bringing you the pretty pictures today and making this broadcast as wonderful as it is today. See, it was perfect handwriting. You have nothing to worry about. Now let's take a look at some of the highlights from a very exciting second period of action, starting with this impressive save by Aaron Mercer. Some big physical hits on both sides of the ice. This shot from Jack Johansson gave the Falcons the lead. You see a mass of bodies in front of Mercer. Not much he could do about it. Max Macchione went full extension for that save. Another big hit was leveled right there. These teams got very aggressive with one another. There's another big hit. That one delivered by Fitchburg State. Then right at the end of the period, Mike Macchione scored himself rather than the puck. But the big story, Dan, was the penalties. We talked about how the physical aggressive play didn't get a lot of penalty calls until about halfway through the period, a little past the halfway point. There was a big fracas in front of the Salem State net. That wound up with Corey Tuminis being sent home, essentially. He was told to go to the locker rooms and play no more hockey today. Fitchburg State had a major penalty. They wound up with the too many men on the ice penalty as well. And that was how Salem State was able to tie the game. But they're able to find the back of the net through David Seacack, who was able to regain the zone with the man advantage, just have himself a lot of clean ice and space to shoot. He picked a corner and did not miss, and that leveled the score at 2-2. So through two periods of play, shots 19 apiece, 9-8 in that second period in favor of the Falcons, 11-10 in favor of Salem in the first. Falcons are now officially 0-1 on the power play. Salem is 1-2 and those were the only penalties we really had in there. There was, Hunter Ford had a great chance cutting in front of the net. Salem had to commit a penalty to sort of delay their power play, if you will. Falcons couldn't do anything with the four on three advantage, and then Salem, with the extended opportunity, able to eventually find a goal. We will see at least one more goal before we are done tonight. There are no more ties, it's playoff hockey. Will they finish in regulation? Will we need overtime? There's only one way to find out. Here with the play-by-play -play for period number three is Dan Bolak. Thank you very much, John. Falcons going left to right in the home gold. And the Vikings going from right to left in the road oranges. Another beautiful hockey game tonight. We're happy to bring it along to you. So Donahue keeps that in the zone. Flicks it along in the left corner for Zach Dill. Dill turning about, keeping control of it. He'll be trying to find his teammate Eric Larson. He's got a goal and assist in this contest. Falcons able to get it out of the zone. Yeah, that's the most dangerous line that Salem's got at their disposal. 13, 17, 21. And I think we're going to be seeing a lot of that trio on the ice in this third period. We we're talking between periods, Dan. You told me you wouldn't be surprised to see some double shifts there for Larson, Dylan, O'Donoghue. We'll see just how much. Those three men stay on the ice. They've contributed to so many of the Viking goals this season, and they are easily the three most dangerous players at their disposal. Ford and trying to race after this puck, getting tied up there with Luke Pepin. In the right wing corner, now loose puck, turn around, shot! And Wilmshurst puts it wide to the right. Woolley trying to pull that one out. It's on the near side, it's cleared out of the zone. Gags to go across the left side, and that's shot in basically. Mercer will stick it down. About 90 seconds gone. Falcons trying to steal the puck away from Seolin. That one cleared out of the zone. Off a stick. And here's Seacack who tied it up. He's battling with Halbig on the right side. Seacack still in pursuit of that puck on the left side. Couple Vikings there for reinforcements. Well, Dusky with the shot from the left point. Off a of Falcon, pops into the right wing corner. Oliver Cookson sacrificed his body to get in the way of that one. A lot of block shots on both sides tonight as well. Glennon Gretorix trying to move it along. Behind the net, Pepin lost the handle on that. That was actually Luke Day. 
Pittsburgh just trying to get it out of the zone. They will now do just that and bring it up on the far side. Trying to find Cookson. Just could not get stick to puck on that one. If he had, the Falcons would have retaken the lead. It was a great pass by Toivo Kramer. Shot just couldn't get online. And Hayden Hughes, who got his first goal of the season against the Falcons in the first meeting between these two teams, took a shot, and that's gloved down by Max Macchione. 17.39 to go in the third, 2-2 to score. Again, the winner of this game will get Worcester State on what is tentatively scheduled to be Tuesday afternoon at 2.30. However, we have an impending storm coming in that might throw a wrench into that. Weather? Messing yep. with the mascot hockey schedule? Really? That never happens. Yep. It's already happened once. This game was supposed to be two nights ago. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Now a two-on-two -two back the other way, and here is that top line out there again. Dill not able to do much with it as his progress is halted. Boothiette with some nice moves with the stick. Knock it back into the Viking end. Dill will catch up to it and feed it for Skylar Miller. Miller behind the net. Will now carry it up off the boards. That's gonna find Josh Miller instead. And now his pass intercepted by Connor Woolley. Woolley into the zone, his shot is fought off by Macchione. Into the left wing corner, Woolley's gonna get back now in front, they score! It's the captain, Yanakopoulos, who's giving the Vikings a 3-2 lead. For Matt Yanakopoulos, just his fourth goal of the season, but it couldn't have come at a better time for Salem State. Just came crashing in from that right side. It was a great pass by Woolley to set him up. And he beat Macchione over his right shoulder. Sixth assist of the season for Connor Woolley. And with that, Salem leads for the first time tonight. Up three to two, looking for their fourth straight quarterfinal win as a number six seed in the Mascat playoffs. Pittsburgh back in their own end, having trouble really keeping it on their stick on those passes. Now stretched up ice, and Walk getting to that one in the left wing corner. Millette trying to keep control. Couldn't position his body where he wanted. It's Jack Saavedra able to swoop in and steal that away. Saavedra was listed as the extra skater, but with two minutes of ejection, he's now solidly on that fourth line for the rest of the duration. Landon Gretericks with a shot. That's punched aside by Macchione into the netting and out of play. 15.56 to go in the third. The Vikings lead 3-2. to two. Macchione looked less like he was saving a hockey shot and more like he was being menaced by a bug. Just swatted that puck away. Sent it flying into the netting. Made a couple of folks up in the second level jump back. Now there's a shot. That one punched up in the air by Macchione, and it just barely touched the ceiling. Just I think it hit the light. I don't think it got high enough to hit the ceiling. It might have touched the light. But we are not at Tropicana Field. The lights are not in play. Just a little over 20 feet above the ice level is the ceiling here at the Wallace Civic Center. And that got just enough to get there. Seolan tries to drop it back for Wilmshurst, but he finds the stick of Eric Larson instead. Now Seolan will take it, pass it off. Johansson's shot is gobbled up by Mercer. Johansson already has one goal on an impressive strike. That one might have had more velocity than the goal from shorter range, too. But Mercer was able to stand tall, make the save. Take another look. Just being positionally sound, get himself right in front of it. He tracked it well. He was able to gobble up that shot. Now, Mike Macchione with a high riser. Sails over the crossbar. Shot from the left point, cut down in front. These shots from the Falcons have some mustard on them. Plenty of oof. Mike Macchione back in his own end. Pops over the stick of pounding. That's something to watch, too, is just the fact that the Falcons on some of these tape to tape passes have been having trouble settling it. And on the giveaway, Salem State scores from Connor 
Woolley. He fed Yannakopoulos for the go-ahead goal, and now he strikes for insurance. It's four to two. Connor Woolley was just the right man in the right time. I gotta be honest, Dan, he did not do anything particularly special to intercept this puck. He didn't dispossess anyone. He just kind of was there. The puck found his stick. He had a golden opportunity handed to him. He was able to beat Macchione to give the Vikings the insurance goal. And now the Falcons will take their time out and try to recover. 15 minutes remain in this third period and the Falcons don't find two goals at the very minimum. It's gonna be 15 minutes remain in their season. Just to think about that last one, it was turned over, just struggling with the passes and just found Woolley who quickly wired it past Macchione. Of the four goals Salem has scored, two have been just cross ice, just quick one-time shots that can be challenging for a goalie to stop the other one. Goalies with lots of space, a lot of time, just, or at least in Woolley's case, enough time to pick a spot and just wiring it into a corner. It was the perfect shot needed to beat Macchione. You saw Macchione kind of crumple after that shot by Woolley, like he couldn't believe it had gotten past him. There have been moments where I've got my glove out there, I feel like I've gotten a piece of it, and yet the other team is celebrating. It's like, I was sure I was there. Macchione probably felt the same way. Archibald into the zone. Puts that towards Mercer, he goes and covers it. And now three Vikings want to give Archibo a what for. Skylar Miller was in there first. Raf Prasner's in as well. Prasner's already served time in the penalty box today. They're pulling Luke Day off of him as well. A little surprised we don't see a Viking go into the penalty box right now, but no penalties. Yep, they'll let that one go. I didn't really see anything wrong with what Archibald did, Dan. I didn't he either. He came in, he shot, and followed it up, maybe like he, he poked at Mercer, but I mean Mercer came out there to get the puck, and Archibald's going for the same available puck. But it's not like he leveled him; he didn't even check him. As we know, uh, teams get very defensive about their goaltenders. When they're getting checked, they don't like their goalies being touched. That one just barely stays in play. The lip of the glass and stays in, settle down behind the net. Ford trying to move it along. Gignac trying to shoot it towards goal. That's blocked in front, Josh Miller. Now left side, backhand by Ford hits the side of the net. Got the twine on the wrong side. In the left wing corner, Forden digs it out, trying to spin back, but O'Donoghue gets in the way there. Battle for in the neutral zone. It's a whack there. And now another chance is that's sent down for icing. We get a face off to one side of Mercer, 13.45 to go in the third. Vikings lead 4-2. See the Falcons ratcheting up the intensity. They know the time's ticking away. 13 minutes is a lot of time, but it's not all the time in the world. And Salem State is going to take their time out right now. Interesting timing, but the Vikings will take their time there with the icing. Give their players 60 extra seconds of rest. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast, these two coaches, Dean Fuller and Bill O'Neill, very, very much experienced. Fuller in his 38th season, O'Neill in his 41st in their respective posts. Not too often you call a game where the coaches have a combined 79 years on the job. 
They've been at this for such a long time. The scoreboard update, by the way, from Amelia Park in Westfield. The Owls lead 2-1 late in the second period. Winner of that game will get undefeated Plymouth in the semifinals. Winner of this game will get the two-seed Worcester. Teams have called their timeouts now. We'll have hockey the rest of the way. The draw comes to the left. A great velocity on the shot, but the accuracy not there as it goes behind the net off the boards and cleared out by the Vikings. Brenton Skaggs, who took that shot, will retrieve it way back in his own end. Falcons pop it up in the air, stretch it along. Cookson having trouble settling it. Vikings will take it. Yanakopoulos out to the near side. Finding Evan Cronkite, and now dumped in the zone. Here's Skaggs again, stretches it up, but that's knocked down by Seacap. who had goal number two for the Vikings. Salem's had three in a row after the Falcons had a 2-1 lead. Falcons had their goals from Kramer and Johansson. The Vikings had their goals from Larson, from Seacap, from Yanakopoulos, and from Woolley. There is Boothiet trying to move it along for Reese Bergman. Bergman, keep control, but surrounded by Oren Schertz. He loses the puck. Luke Day into the zone. That goes off the backboards. Hounding will move it along on the far side. Stretched up, trying to find Mike Macchione. He'll get there first. They checked off for him. I think they were going to call the icing. And if they have just called the ice, and they waited quite a while for it. It was a long time there between linesman raising his hand, the puck reaching the goal line, and no whistle for a while. If you're going to wait that long to call it, then don't call it. Maybe his whistle got stuck or something. That could have been it. But you can see the players all check up there because they were expecting it to come. Maybe that's also why they did call it. It's like, okay, fine, it's icing, whatever. Mike Macchione, the right wing corner, trying to get out of the hit there. Another Falcon taking the ice, that was Johansson. Macchione wound up delivering a big hit to Kyle Waldusky. Salem State crowd wanted a penalty, but it looked like a good clean hit. I don't, we've not gotten a single penalty for a hit in this contest. It's true, we have not. Take another look at this hit by Macchione. Right along the near side boards, just lowers the shoulder, barrels into the man. I mean, that's hockey. The puck's there, it's available, it's fine. It's a good hard hit, too. Great work by the FATV camera crew, as always. Here's Johansson just trying to hold on to the puck, loses his footing. Seacap will have it. Mike gets thrown off the boards. Linesman has to jump out of the way of that. Now pinned up against the bench on the near side. Miller. We could basically peer forward from our perspective in the press box, just look right down at that play. Now Pepin blasts it off the boards. Come all the way back to the Falcon blue line and Gignac. Try to play it off the boards. Lost footing there. And here's Landon Gretericks. Can't get a clean shot away. Miller's stick will get a piece of that first. Now the left corner. Salem moving it around. To the point, Pepin. Looking for the shot pass there. Ends up deflecting one or two times and goes into the netting and out of play. 10.54 to go in the third. Salem State leads 4-2. Shots in this period, six to four in favor of the Vikings, and two of them have found the back of the net. Draw to the right of Macchione. Vikings take that one. They've got the top line back out there. Larson puts it off the backboards. Now that'll go into the Viking end. Here's Cookson with Miller on him. Toivo Kramer who had the opening goal in this contest so long ago for Archambault. Archambault trying to protect the puck, but the pressure there too much. Vikings will get it to the neutral zone. 
Falcons will take it back in their own end. That pass hits Dill. Now Larson trying to feed Dill in front, going to the goal, stopped by Macchione. On that right side, there's a shot. That's turned aside by Macchione as well. Back to Macchione goes. He has to be sharp the rest of the way. He can't allow the Vikings to get any more goals in this contest. For these last few minutes, Dan, that has looked a lot more likely. Salem State increasing their lead to three. Then it has looked like Fitchburg State is going to get a third goal of their own. But Zekak with some moves, able to keep control of the puck, get a shot off. Macchione nearly in the scorpion pose there for a moment as he was diving downwards to try to seal down the low end. Saavedra trying to feed Walk. Vikings having none of that. And the Vikings with that two goal lead, they know they can play a more defensive style too. They know they can just cram up the slot and really make it challenging. And the Salemen around the boards to the near side. Saavedra intercepts. Now to the right point, Trenton Skaggs. Goes to Nolan Sargent. His shot goes behind the net. Skaggs will pick that out. Keeping it in the zone, he'll try again. That shot cut down in front. You can see Marshall with a poke check there. Try to clear it out. That does come out of the zone, and it will be offside. Sargent desperately tried to keep that one in. It just bounced outside the blue line. And then when he whacked it into the offensive zone, he actually whacked it right into the chest of Brendan Walk. We'll get a face off just outside the offensive zone. It'll be Bouffiette taking it for the Falcons. Vikings take control of that one and dump it all the way down and on target. All Macchione can do is play it. Another rough pass for the Falcons. They've had their issues with the passing, especially in this third period. And that could be the dagger. Keegan O'Donohue has made it 5-2. to two. Another brutal turnover. O'Donohue has nothing in his way. And it's going to be a long, long hill to climb, and it could be another long off season for the Falcons. Another terrible turnover on the defensive end for Fitchburg State, just trying to clear it out of the zone, not really able to get the puck where they wanted it. It winds up on the skate and the stick of a Salem State player. Gets it forward to O'Donohue, and he does the rest. Now it's desperation time for the Falcons. The passing has not been sharp in this period. The puck control has not been where it's needed to be. That has bit the Falcons very hard in this frame. On that last one, Macchione just completely hung out to dry. Can't expect a goalie to make much do with that. As that's sent out into the netting and out of play. 7.52 to go in the third. The Vikings could very well be on their way to yet another six seed victory. Said coming in. On paper, this looks like a mismatch in favor of Fitchburg State. But this Salem State team is tough. They've got that institutional memory, what, what it's like playing from behind, being the underdog, being the sixth seed, as you said. They played very, very well here today. They are well on their way towards the semifinals. It's not to say it's over yet. The Falcons have a mountain to climb and only seven and a half minutes to do it. Day out in front! Score! It's over. If it wasn't over before, it is now. Landon Gremerix makes it six to two. As the Vikings wave bye bye, and there goes Max Macchione. Chris Matone's going to come in and try to finish this game for the Falcons. 
And I feel the frustration there out of the freshman. It's just all gone south for the green and gold in this third period. And Landon Gretorix, the freshman from Reading, gets his third goal of the season. Luke Day gets the assist. Six goals for six different players for the Vikings. They've scored five in a row. And as it stands, the turning point when they finally did call penalties for the first time. The tying goal coming on the five on three and now it all collapsing in the third. And here's Seacack into the zone. His shot is kicked aside by Matone. Just the fifth appearance for Chris Matone this year, and it'll be his last collegiate appearance, unless the Falcons pull a miracle here. Into the right wing corner, Woolley. Keep control of it. Macchioni trying to steal it away. That one punches the ceiling, and I don't think that's coming back. Nope. No, that, that puck is gone. It's actually a piece of the ceiling on the ice. It punched a hole through it. It went right through the ceiling. Part of the ceiling fell down on the ice. That's a problem. Now, at some point, Dan, because we've seen a puck go in the ceiling earlier, we saw a tiny child get a souvenir. I'm sure there are pucks on hand. Yes. At some point, you start running out. At some point, I'm not worried about it. Here's Fredericks into the zone. What's it across through the paint out the other side? If they run out of pucks, that means Salem State can't score any more goals. That's one way of looking at it. Bergman fakes the shot, gets one off. It's caught off by Mercer. A reactionary save with the glove. Here's Dill, some pushing and shoving in front of Mercer, and everyone appealing for a penalty. Skyler Miller was just holding on to Mike Macchione's stick. Now thrown out in front, Dill gets one on target, or just over it at least. Larson trying to move it along. Luthiet will clear it high in the air, it goes, and all the way down where Evan Cronkite will go and pursue it. Five minutes remain in the Falcons' season. The Vikings well on their way, leading 6-2, 90-footer, stopped by Matone. He'll move it along. Hunter Forden with a burst of speed into the zone. Horn's last effort there, poked away by Mercer. First time these two teams played this season, the Falcons were by far the better team. They won it 7-2. The second time they played, it was a much closer battle, a 3-1 win for the Falcons. Wasn't decided until late in the contest. The third one, it was a goal in the last couple minutes that tied it for Salem, and then an overtime winner to get them their only points they've taken from the green and gold this year. But today, it's been evenly matched for 40 minutes, but this third period, has been all Salem in terms of dictating the pace of play and in terms of keeping control of the puck and moving it to their advantage. Controlling the pace of play, taking advantage of two huge Falcon mistakes. Salem State did get the first goal of this period, Dan, but it was only three to two. The Falcons have been more disciplined. That might still be the scoreline. Instead, one bad turnover made it four to two, then another made it five. Salem State added one more for good measure. One thing that will concern me is as this game has started to turn into a frustrating note, 
how these two teams handle themselves in decorum in the last few minutes of play. Archambault with a blast. That one, I think, got cut down in front, and if not, Mercer got a glove to it. Best chance the Falcons have had since sometime in the second period, probably? It's been a little while. The Falcons do have eight shots in this period. But yeah, I can't remember a better chance right now. Here's Millette. Backhands it along for Walk. Walk trying to split two defenders, and he gets it to Johansson. He got his first varsity goal. That was a puck they took out of play, you know. They keep the puck for the first career goal. That's true. It was a great goal, but it might be a bit of remembrance as perhaps the last goal that the Falcons score this season. Time continuing to wind down. Two minutes and 10 seconds remaining. You know, it just occurred to me that we have a puck kicking around in the truck. We do. So if they run out on the ice, we've got them covered. Someone can run and get another one. That'll be faster and uh, way less rude than taking one for the kid. That's true. Falcons regaining the zone, but look at the pressure, how Salem has played in this third period. They played a great period of hockey. Playing to the level that they've needed to. They're just 100 seconds away from earning a trip, yet another trip to the MassCAC semifinals. Boothiet trying to move it along. Now off the boards. Here are the Vikings from Raph Fraser. Hit into the boards, the groans there. And another one coming in, and this is what I feared. The frustration's boiling over. One bad hit leads to another. There are going to be multiple players who are going to finish this game in the locker room. It looked like Prasner got tripped, and then Reese Bergman got drilled, and then a Falcon came from well away from the play and just barreled into the ice, barreled into the play, rather. And there is still a Viking down all the way in the far corner. Salem State trainer going over to check on him. Looks like Michael Macchione and Josh Miller was also escorted there. And Macchione and Josh Miller into the penalty box. Now Miller is going to be sent. Looks like he's going straight to the locker room, actually. Thus would go the career of Miller. He's a senior. The injured Viking is not a... Is that Praise? That is Praise. Raph Praisner back up on his feet. He's being helped back to the locker room. Put five on the board against Miller. It's probably going to get a disqualification, which won't really matter too much. He was a senior honored at senior day. He's not expected to return for another season. As we, There are several seniors on the Falcon roster. Officially one graduate student and eight seniors. I do know that, that Antoine Gignac, the graduate student, has at least another year of eligibility and is expected to return. Egan Wolford, a senior, expected to return as well. But the other seniors, Reese Bergman, Anthony Seolin, Wyatt Wilmshurst, Josh Miller, Gene Boothiet, Hunter Ford, and Chris Matone, all expected to graduate. They put another major on the board against Reese Bergman. Raph Brazner's been taken a little bit deeper into the locker room. We had a pretty good perspective on the initial treatment, it looked like they were working on his left shoulder, but he wasn't, you know, obviously hard to tell, and we don't want to speculate exactly what the injury was. But he was able to get up, skate off under his own power. Again, they were looking at his left shoulder, so that'll be something for Salem State to be dealing with as they get ready to take on Worcester. 
There's a Viking in the box, and looks like there'll be enough cancellations. But they assess two majors against Pittsburgh State that stay on the board. The rule in the end of that, the Falcons were the aggressors, the perpetrators, and they should be punished most severely for their actions. Brendan Walk and Jack Zavedra have, had, have joined Josh Miller in the penalty box where they will spend the remaining 75 seconds of this game. The Vikings, I imagine at this point, with the two-man advantage, will probably go for seven or eight or nine or try to get as many as they can in the last minutes. Just because at that point, they're going to feel the Falcons deserve to have it run up on them. That's my guess. The Falcons will clear it. A bullet down the boards. 45 seconds left. Well, the Vikings could also just hold it back here and let it run out. If you have a 6-2 to two in your final score pool after the second period, the usual disclaimer applies. Get help because you're betting on D3 college hockey. But if you had 6-2 to two in your pool, you might be psychic because this game did not look like it was going to end this way after 40 minutes. Peyton Hughes able to gain the zone and drive one in the direction of goal. With a few seconds left, once again, the Vikings relishing the role of the underdog. Take a victory as the number six seed. They're headed back to the Mascac semifinals once again. And for the Falcons, it's now four one and done's in a row. It was a solid 40 minutes. A great game played up to that point, but it all fell apart in the third period. And the Vikings rightfully the winners with how they played the final 20. Just an absolute nightmare period for Fitchburg State at the very worst time. A quick goal by Salem, two bad, bad turnovers. And then an extra one for good measure. It's probably the worst period the Falcons have played all season long. It'll be the last period they play all season long. Just a tremendous collapse in the end. And Salem State made them pay and then some. Four goals in the third period. They scored five in a row after going down 2-1. And the Vikings will be on to Worcester to take on the Lancers in at least a few days time. They have not taken any points from Worcester State this season. But at this point as the sixth seed, we mentioned you know those three times, the last three times as a sixth seed that they won in the quarterfinals. Two of those three times, they won in the semis, too. And so they could very well make their way up to Hanaway Rink in Holderness, New Hampshire, to take on Plymouth. It could be yet another matchup between those two teams. I'm assuming a few other things here. But this Salem State team, after this game, they know anything's possible. And they could have told you that coming into it. This team did not look like a 7-18 and 18 team, I'll tell you that much, Dan. Even before this third period where they took advantage of every mistake, they played Fitchburg even through the first two. It was a coin flip of who had the, who had the advantage after two periods. And then Salem State did everything they needed to do in the third. They put four on the board turn this one into a laugher. 6-2 is the final. Indeed it is. And so for the Falcons, their season ends with a record of 12-11-3. The Vikings now 8-18. May very well be their most impressive victory of the season. I mean, yeah, they had a 7-2 win against Framingham, 
But so what at that point? <laughs> this is way more impressive. With the stakes as they were, the team that was rated third worst in the pairwise ratings comes away with a big victory against Fitchburg State, the number three seed who find their season just collapsing down in the last moment. And, I mean, obviously, you know, we're both Fitchburg State alumni. It's true. Factual statement. It is. And we both, you know, we're both rooting for the Falcons through and through. It is Fitchburg Access Television. It's yes. not Salem Access Television. Mm -hmm. I'm, sure, I'm sure the crew at SATV does a tremendous job. I don't want to throw any shade. It's not Salem Access Television. But there is definitely a little bit of frustration. I know last year when the Falcons <laughs> lost in overtime to Framingham State, there was frustration there. We had our good friend Tim Foley on the call with us for that game. There was not frustration. He went bad. Yeah. And because that felt like a season with so much promise and just not being able to find a goal against Framingham, the number seven seed only led into the playoffs because of a plague. And they let Framingham get the better of them. One mistake in that game. And just like here, late, it was mistakes. The Falcons could not settle passes down. They couldn't string things together. They, couldn't clear, they couldn't clear the puck out of their zone. Yep. It just all fell apart for them. And, and that's going to be frustrating. And that's going to be, you know, for the players who are returning, that's going to be another several months they've got to stool on that one before they come back and try again around Halloween time. I will say, and we're going to take a look at some of the highlights of this third period in a moment here. I will say, after the bad blood that kind of spilled over in the dying minutes, it was good to see you know, the handshake line. It's a tradition. Obviously, it was good to see the players congratulating Salem State. Chris Matone kind of led, led the line and set the tone going toward the end of the game, you saw him take a long time with a number of Salem State players. He was almost saying, you know, congratulations, go get them. Mm -hmm. So that was good to see for Fitchburg State. And but I thought, you know, at the very end with all of that, with two majors on the board at the end, that Salem might actually try to pot some more goals just to make them pay for their mistakes in that sense. But, you know, they didn't put that top line out there on the five on three. And when the zone was cleared, no, they, they held the puck behind their net for 30 seconds. Yeah. They didn't have to do that. Yep. Because I think at the end, there's the thought, let's, like, let's just finish this game clean and let's just get on with it. After all, we know there's nothing more to settle today. Everything it, has been settled. We're going to Worcester on Tuesday. Let's just get there in one piece. Let's take a look at how Salem got there. Some of the highlights from a tremendous third period for the team in Orange. That was the winning goal there. Connor Woolley feeding Matt Yanakopoulos. Jack Johansson looking for his second of the game. A great stop there. A brutal turnover. And right on the spot there was Connor Woolley to make it 4-2. There was the little tap there on the shot there. And then a lot of pushing and shoving came afterwards. There's that shoulder save at Scorpion pose by Macchione. And then another bad turnover right out in front making it five, and then this was the last one. Landon Gretorex making it six to two, and that was all she wrote. Four goals from four different goal scorers in the period. In all, it was six goals from six different goal scorers for Salem State. Once again, they advance to the semifinals. Dan Bolak, your final thoughts before we tell the people thank you very much. The Falcons played well. They played their game for for about the 40 minutes. Those first two periods, they played very well, you know, getting the short end on the indiscipline there, the five on three. They could have survived that. They would have been in good shape, but giving up that five on three goal tied the game, and there was a chance you know, going into the third. This was going to be a nice, solid matchup. Great playoff hockey in the last 20 minutes of regulation time, and we did not get what we were expecting. Salem came out the better team, the Falcons were just making so many mistakes. So many passes going awry, giving Salem additional opportunities in somewhere they had all the net and all day to shoot at. 
and they were not going to let the Falcons off the hook. They did not. They hung them for four. And now it's Salem who will get to go on to Worcester and Fitchburg yet again. They lost in Worcester in 2019 in the quarterfinals. They lost as the two seed in the semis in 2020. They lost as the two seed in the quarterfinals in 2022. And now as the three seed here in 2023, they lose again. It's four straight years that they exit the playoffs with no wins to show for their efforts. A frustrating end to what had been a very good season for Fitchburg State, but as you said, Dan, they will pack it up, come on back in October, and we will say thank you all very much for watching our hockey coverage of Fitchburg State here on FATV. For Dan Bullock, we want to thank our entire FATV crew. Our director today is Nate Glenny. Dylan O'Brien did a tremendous job on replay, and of course, our fantastic camera crew, Evan Schockenbach, Tyler Sargent, Seth Rigby, and Robin Como. Thank you so much to them for all their work. On behalf of Mr. Bullock and the entire FATV crew, I'm John Gugarty saying thank you very much for watching. We will see you next time right here on FATV.